All right, guys, so I just got these in the shop. I was putting the whole pallet in first, and then I realized it would be easier just to split them up here. These are the EG4 Power Pro wall mount batteries. They are 14.3 kilowatt hours, something like that. They are 280 amp hour, 48 volt batteries. They have heaters in them, and they are outdoor rated. So the goal is to get them up on the wall outside and see if I can, that's where this comes in. I've got a Victron shunt I ordered with them. So hopefully be able to put this in line here and see on a cold night or cold day what kind of consumption we have on these two batteries as the heaters kick in. I just thought it would be neat to be able to see that. These are heavy. So each one I think is 300 something pounds. So it'll be a bit of a challenge. I mean, you saw I moved them in with my machine. So I'm probably gonna be trying to utilize the machine in mounting them outside also. But we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna get started here pretty soon. Yeah, I'm really impressed with the packaging. I knew, of course, they wouldn't come like a, a standard rack battery, just some cardboard boxes with some foam around them. They definitely had to design something to be able to take the weight. So they look in good shape. I did see this one dent here. So uh, you couldn't make that out with the wrapping. So I'm gonna pop them open here and see if there's any issues. I don't anticipate an issue here, but yeah, this is really nice. And like you guys saw, you can pick them up with forks or a pallet jack if you needed to. All right, so they come with these clips here to hold the box down. So they're just bent into place to hold everything, no screws. So I'll show you over here. I'm bending them up so that the lid can slide. What I think I might do is just slice here with some side cutters to shorten this a little bit, um, to shorten my time frame here so I can just cut all of these, bend it out, and then the lid should just come off. All right, that's the last of the clips. See what this looks like here. Whoo, man, that is neat. That thing is huge. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so we've got 16 280 amp hour cells in here. I'm gonna get this thing out of here, probably pop the sides off. And I think I'll take the cover off because it would be neat to see inside of the um, battery here. Maybe look for the heat pads and stuff like that. So that's probably my next step. Oh, and before I forget, let's look and see what came in it. So this looks like the communication cable. And then we've got some wedge anchors to be able to hold the mounting plate onto masonry. Negative cables, positives are probably on the other side. And these have those Amphenol connectors for the quick disconnect types. Let me show you guys. So these snap onto the terminals. Yep, so positives were on that side. These I believe are 2 ot. Also, this is a fairly new addition, but they they started including these handles because of the weight of the units there. So make them a little easier for people to move around. Oh yeah, and this dent down here, you probably can't make it out from this angle. Let me show you. No issue, just empty space there. So there's a little break in the plywood, but yeah, it didn't do anything. Yeah, definitely an A-plus for packing. You see the blocking down at the bottom to stop any kind of motion. So these are Phillips head screws on the sides for these little plastic grates. And I've heard of people having issues with the screws. Some people stripped them out. So I'm just loosening them by hand first, just in case that was the issue. And then I could use my drill, but I haven't haven't had a problem with it. So this will give you a view of what it looks like without the plastic grates on the side. This is the positive side with the breakers. 
Um, and I believe these screws have to come off here and there's probably a rubber gasket right along up here. I'm not really sure, but um, yeah, I'll get the other side off over there and then we'll pop this off. All right, so if this does pop open, I will shift the camera around so you guys can see the other side. Looks like I've got it. Let me get it from the top. Whew. <laughs> so there's another plate on the inside. This is just a cover. Okay, so let me pop all those screws off. All stainless steel screws or bolts, it looks like. Makes sense they had this inner cover. I don't know why I was thinking the outer one would be all there was. Okay, so the question now is, is this the big reveal? Yes. So let me bring the camera around, but you guys can probably see right there. This does have just a, a rubber gasket that fits in that channel all the way around. So that's what I was expecting. I was just expecting it on the outer cover. So this is where the real uh, weatherproofing comes in. And this is a really cool battery. What a cool build here. So these bus bars here can handle 600 amps on each bus bar because they can parallel between batteries. So the bus bars themselves, um, just to be able to handle positive and negative, are really beefy. There's two four gauge wires for positive, two for the negative. And if you guys have seen inside the LL models, which is like the small brother to these, uh, then you've seen they have these shields here over the BMS. So this has the same kind of construction here, really durable. So um, a lot of the other rack batteries that I've seen and other batteries, the, the BMS is just mounted right there, which is fine, but they, um, they provide a shield around it, which I think is really neat. So these are all laser welded bus bars. And these are extinguishers. So they have extinguishers here and at the top. So they have extinguishers bottom and top on these batteries. And check this out. So the double four gauge goes straight to the BMS there. And they have the negative bus bar goes straight to the BMS over there. So there's not even any wire leads here. It's designed with the bus bar just the right size. So it hooks right into the negative. This looks like a communications board here. And then you have the pre-charge resistor down there to charge up the capacitors in your inverters. And from this angle, you can see the extinguishers at the top. And I'm guessing these are the leads to go to the heating pads between the cells, which I can't see from this angle. So you can't really get down into the cells in there unless I were to take something else apart. Yeah, so just an all around really nice build and very beefy, but it has to be. These can charge and discharge at 200 amps. So you're talking about a lot of amperage flowing through these <laughs> conductors here. Yeah, I don't see any kinks or anything run in an odd place or anything kind of, because I've, I've seen other batteries where stuff was kind of misplaced or kinked in some direction, but everything has a home here in this build. It looks really good. Like I said, I really do like that there. You could have just run a small or two small four gauge wire or something like that. But having that L-shaped bus bar built there, really good idea. And I do like the fact that they insulated the bus bars in all these different locations here. All right, guys, well, I'm gonna close everything back up. I'm not gonna bother checking the low temperature protection or anything like that. I think they probably have that taken care of. I am gonna be testing the heaters, like I said, when I get a chance. And uh, I can do a capacity test once I have the shunt uh, hooked up to it. Also, I don't anticipate any issues. But check this out. The I didn't look at it before, but the communication cables actually come with a waterproof end also, which I guess that makes sense. So if you look at the comms cable here, it's not just a standard Ethernet cable. It actually comes with a waterproof fitting on the end. Really neat. 
And yeah, oh, before I forget, um, uh, there's a bunch of stats I can go over in the next video, but these are designed to parallel, like I said. So here you would have another battery can lead to this one, and then you can have your home run to a bus bar or the inverter. Or you could lead both batteries to the inverter also, either way. All right, so I wanted to give everyone a shot of what it looks like standing up. So I'm going to be putting the cover back on here in just a second. I don't think I pointed out the different brackets here that hold the cells into place. And that does remind me, the cells are situated on their sides. So I guess that's kind of obvious, but I figured I'd mention that. The manual states to keep the battery upright in the upright position. Obviously, it comes shift on its back. So that would actually be, on their back would actually be the same as the uh, rack batteries. The cells are facing upwards, the vents are upwards. These are on their side, which is fine too. But you definitely wouldn't want to have this on its face. So these vents would be down in that case. I really can't picture anyone doing that, but it's something I figured I would mention. So I'm going to close this back up here in just a second. And I will show you guys what this is going to be replacing here, what I'm going to be uh, replacing with these two batteries and also kind of where I'm going to be putting them. Before I do that, I'll show you guys the BMS while well, I still got it up right here. If you guys have seen the LL models, this is the same screen on the newest LL models. So same basic thing. We've got 56% here, but uh, this also, let me focus in a little bit. Yeah, so 56%, 52 volts. And you can see here, they actually have a little meter right here also. There's your alarm and run. So that is something that you don't have on the LL models, this little meter also. And these are the four negative terminals. Okay, let me get over here. Yeah, so this is what they're gonna be replacing. These are two DIY batteries. They're actually a little dusty there. Oh, yeah. These are two DIY batteries that I did, uh, shoot, it's been well over a year ago. Um, there is a Overkill BMS on this one and a JK BMS on that one. I just wanted to test both of them. And they both have worked great. So the Overkill has passive balancing, but I haven't had any issue with it. And these are both, like I said, these are 200, 280 amp hour cells on this. So it's an even swap really, except for this cabinet's not gonna be in here anymore. So this is going away and I'll have a lot more floor space. You can see the 6,000 XP there. Had the cover off doing some more fiddling with it. As a matter of fact, the JK BMS came with a little nifty screen. That's the only thing that, that stopped working months ago. I'm not really sure why. No issue with the BMS or like I said, the overkill BMS. And the JK has always been really close to the shunt, almost exact as far as that. The overkill is always straight a little bit, but anyway, you guys weren't interested in that part. But yeah, the I will show you here in just a minute where I'm gonna be putting the outdoor batteries. And like I said, this whole cabinet's going away, frees up a lot of space for me. And actually they're gonna be right behind, there's gonna be a wireway outside, right behind the 18K PV outside. So the 18K PV is probably about right here or so. And I'm gonna put a little bit of a concrete step right here. And the batteries are gonna sit there. I am gonna put some Unistrut, I think. We'll see, um, for the mounting bracket. And those are gonna sit there and I'm gonna get my own wire weight. Now these actually, you can get a wire weight that go, a custom wire weight that they have that can go underneath the uh, 18K PV or the 6000 XP but I would have needed two of those and I plan on getting another pro battery for out here. So it's gonna be three total. So I would have needed three to the, three of those. I figured I would just get a longer wire way and put it on the top of all three. And I'm gonna run a conduit inside. So the plan eventually is gonna to be to poke straight through the wall into the wire way inside if I raise it up. But for right now, I'm just gonna run the conduit in and probably go down like that. We'll see, but once I get that concrete step poured, put these on, then we'll go from there. I don't think I've shown you guys this yet, but my wife got this for me for Christmas. So you can see it from the house through the shop window there. So 
I turn that on if I'm recording, that way the kids don't try to run in when I'm recording a video. I thought that was a really neat idea of hers. I'll leave a link in the description below to the Power Pro battery, the wall mount battery. It was, uh, it was hard to get a hold of for a little while, but now they're back in stock. Yeah, and for the price, these are actually a really good deal considering the features. And it's just shy of having three rack batteries, essentially. So if you had one of those mini cabinets, this is just shy of that. And it does take up a lot less space. All right, so I will have more details about this in the future when I get it on the wall. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching and stay tuned.